Hi there, I'm Pierre de Renincourt with Pluralsight, and welcome to Revit Architecture Design Development Fundamentals. And in this module, we're going to learn how to sketch floors, roofs, and even walls for our Revit model. We'll also take a look at how adjusting things like the dimensions of your building elements can impact some of the data inside of your model. So to start out, let's take a look at how we can sketch floors. So what I want to do is go ahead and jump to my first floor plan. So we'll go to level one really quick. And what we can do is we can start working on some floors. So if you recall, we did build a building pad. I'll go back to 3D view really quick. But I think we got rid of it because we were experimenting with some massing. So what we can do is we can go ahead and drop in a, a new building pad if you wanted to. Or we could just put in another floor. If you put in a building pad, it's going to take into account uh, what's going on with the topo surface. So let's focus on sketching on basic floors. We'll focus on that now that we're not really concerned with the site at the moment. I'm more concerned with showing you how to use some of the sketch tools. So we're going to go to level one. And what I want to do is create a floor. We'll sketch it in place. Now when you're working with a floor and you're sketching in Revit, you want to make sure that you have a closed loop system. And that includes also voids. So if you take a look at our floor here, so it looks like this could possibly be our floor plate. But then we're going to need to create a void for our elevator shaft here. So we're going to need to make sure we take that into account. And then we can also create separate floor plates for the uh, egress areas here where we actually escape throughout the, out of the building. And we can do that really quickly. But I want to take care of the main floor plate here. So in order to sketch a floor in place, you just need to make sure you're on the correct level. We'll go to our architecture tab. And underneath our build panel, we'll click on floor. Now you know that the type selector is activated and we can already start choosing floor types and all that. Um, so for me, uh, for the main bottom floor, I'm going to go with generic here, just a generic 12 inch. I know the floor is not going to be 12 inches, but I just need something generic and it's going to be a placeholder. So a little bit later on down the line, when we develop this design a little more, we can make the adjustments and customizations we need. But we just need something in place. So I'm going to say floor. Now, in my draw panel here, I'm going to select a way to draw this. Now, we can pick walls or we can pick line. So let's do a pick wall. I'm going to say pick wall. So when I pick wall, I can go ahead and click on it. And you'll notice something. We get these little arrows here. But the pink line here is actually on the inside. Now, if I wanted that floor to be more on the outside, since it's the first floor or something, I can do that. I can actually shoot that over like so. So every and then once I make that adjustment, those will all follow. Now, I'm more concerned with just having these floors on the inside of my face, so I'm just going to shoot them right back. And when I shot that one back, it automatically adjusted this one. You'll also notice this area here. This, will be, this is basically our span direction. And you see this same icon right up here in our sketch area. It's our span direction. And it specifies a boundary line of a structural floor. And we won't get into that much detail in this module. I mainly want the form and the element in place. All right, so let's go ahead and sketch in the rest of these elements. Again, we're doing pick wall. I'm just going to follow all the way around here. And the key is just to make sure you have a closed loop system. And what I mean by closed loop, which means there is no overlapping lines, no extended lines on the corners, and there's no gaps either. So just make sure everything looks good. Perfect. All right, and if we do have any issues when we're trying to sketch in these floors, Revit does a nice job of telling us, hey, you're going to need to, uh, we get a nice warning message, and it tells us that we may have a closed, we need a closed loop system, or our boundaries aren't completely closed. So I'm going to go ahead and say green check mark, and voila, we have a nice floor in place. But as I mentioned, we need to go ahead and account for the uh, vertical penetration for the core of our building. So the great thing is, once you create a floor, you're not stuck there. You can actually go back and edit the boundary once again to continue design. So I can uh, go ahead and select everything I want to here. And I'm going to use a filter to grab my floor. So I'll say floor. I have one floor. So I'm going to say check none. Then I'm only going to select floor. Apply and OK. Now, in my mode, I can click on edit boundary. And now my sketch lines reappear. So I can come back in here now and then drop in my sketch line. So I'm going to use a rectangle 
I'm going to go from the outside corner to the outside corner, and this should give me a nice void. Now, I know it's a closed loop system, it worked before, but using these tools here for these basic primitive shapes automatically have closed loop systems. There's no opens or gaps. So, as long as we have this, we're going to have our void. So now I can hit the green check mark, and voila, we now have a floor in place with its void. All right, so now you want to get the rest of the floors in place, but I don't want to have to go through this over and over and over again for every floor. That can get complicated, especially if you have a really tall project or a large project with a lot of levels. Luckily, there's a really cool tool, copy tool, that will allow you to copy to selected levels. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. So right now we know our floor is highlighted in blue, so it's selected. So what I'm going to do really quick is I'm going to, on my keyboard, I'm going to hit Control C for copy. And if that doesn't quite work, I'll just highlight it once again. I'm going to filter, and it looks like it didn't grab, but I'm going to go ahead and do it again. Only my floor selected. This time we'll say Control C, and now it should activate my clipboard here, and I should be able to paste from clipboard. So what I want to do is I want to expand this, and now I want to align to selected levels. So take a look at this. We've got level 1 squared away, right? Now I just want to copy this to level 1, 2, and or actually, excuse me, two, three, and four. I'm going to say apply, and boom. So take a look at this here. I'm going to go ahead and switch my view visual style here to a wireframe so that we can see the floors that we just dropped in right there. So I highly recommend using that copy to selected levels, especially if you're going to be using a lot of repeating elements. And you can see that void also carried its way all the way up here for our shaft as well. So there's a quick way you can sketch your floors and uh, basically work with creating voids for your floors and also copying things to multiple levels for repeating elements. So I'm going to switch my view back here to a consistent color. So at this point, I want to talk about how we can sketch in our roof really quick. And then following that, we'll get into the interior walls and we'll get into creating some um, schematic plans like area plans and also room plans.